Welcome to Road Sense Podcast, Break the Norm, brought to you by Road Safety Network. This is where conversations lead to safer, inclusive roads for India's future. In 2022 alone, overspeeding caused nearly 72% of road accident deaths in India. That's over 1.19 lakh lives lost just because someone was driving too fast. I am Priyanshi Jaiswal from Save Life Foundation, your host for the show. And I'm part of the Road Safety Network, a collective of organizations working together to save lives and transform how India moves. In this episode, we dive into speed challenge on Indian roads, how laws, behavior and scientific methods come together. And joining us is someone who's led major research and policy work in this space. He is a nationally recognized expert in traffic safety and mobility systems. He played a key role in guiding the West Bengal government on scientific speed limit guidelines, Professor Bhargav Mehtra from IIT Kharagpur. Welcome to the show, Professor Bhargav. Thank you, Priyanshi, for having me. It's a very important issue and I'm glad to see it being discussed with both seriousness and simplicity. We all know speeding is dangerous. Still, we don't see any major improvement. So, is it a behavioral issue or a systemic issue? Can you share your thoughts on this? Uh, I would say both. Behavior is just one piece of the puzzle. If you look at our development from Kacha roads and ambassador cars all around to expressways and EVs, India's journey show how far we have come. But the real question here is, have our laws and enforcement evolved just as fast? If you look at the speeding issue, speeding is not just reckless behavior. It is shaped up by roads, vehicles, and also the rules that govern them. Modern infrastructure and high-performance vehicle, they are bound to invite speed. But it's strong adaptive laws and enforcement that must keep it in check. If the system doesn't catch up, we are leaving safety behind. Professor Bhargav, when you say laws should reflect realities of Indian roads, can you tell us what do you mean by that exactly? So, let's think about two things. The people on the road and the environment they move through. We are not just talking about the drivers, but remember we are talking about the overall road user, which includes school children, cyclists, elders, and they are all navigating roads that often cut through markets, hospitals, and residential areas. Yet, our laws rarely reflect these ground realities. Most of our roads lack access control. We have serious accessibility mobility conflicts, and we see a dangerous mix of motorized and non-motorized, fast-moving, slow-moving, all vehicle mixed together without segregation. Therefore, if you look at the larger reality, we urgently need a robust speed policy and a legal framework that recognizes these complex realities of Indian roads. So, Professor Bhargav, could you share a legal example that highlights this? What I remember is immediately is the section 112 of the Motor Vehicle Act. It talks about setting speed limit, such as 50 or 60 km per hour on city roads and up to 100 or 120 km on non-urban or rural highways, depending on the road category. However, it makes practically no allowance for traffic conditions, the operational environment, and the safety of pedestrians, bicyclists, and all other vulnerable road users. If you look at it, many times, speeds are based on 
how first a road can handle. From the point of view of the road category and road engineering, what maximum speed it can take, it can accommodate. Not how fast is actually safe. A wide road, for example, outside the school, we have thousands and thousands of roadside schools. If you look at it, it will look it like a highway. But if the children are crossing there, then speed becomes a life or death issue. If you look at the global cities like Stockholm or Amsterdam, where we use or they have adopted safe system approach and safe speed is one of the extremely important and key pillar. And there they decide the safe speed limit not based on road category alone, but giving due importance to the human injury tolerance while just to ensure a reasonable low chance of death or fatality. That's really insightful. You said that speed limits should not be determined by road category or engineering standards alone. So what should India do? I mean, how can we go from blanket speed limits to something that actually fits our roads and our road users? First of all, I would say that we must notify speed limits on not only the road category or road engineering criteria, but also giving due consideration to traffic environment and most importantly, the human injury tolerance criteria. In other words, speed limit must be scientific and evidence-based. If we go with this principle, then I would say we should have 25 km per hour speed limit in all school zones where the school children are exposed to traffic, 30 km in all other open residential market areas, busy areas. Similarly, also we have to set the scientific speed limit as per the context. In the same way, we must also have maximum speed limit of 50 km per hour in all urban areas. Finally, I would say that the scientific speed limit and its enforcement both are needed because to decide the speed limit, it has to be scientific. Also, unless we are able to enforce it, there is no meaning. I completely agree. Scientific speed limit along with enforcement goes hand in hand. So, Professor Bhargav, you've led some really meaningful work with the West Bengal government. Could you tell us how your team's scientific recommendations helped shape actual speed limit policies and whether this approach could be replicated elsewhere in India, in other states? Uh, Priyanshi, you actually asked me two questions, okay? So, I will try to reply one by one. Uh, first of all, I would say that I consider myself fortunate because, you know, it's a great opportunity uh, to, to, to work, to get an opportunity to work with the government departments. So in that way, we were fortunate that the government of West Bengal took a very progressive step and their commitment was truly commendable. As this policy, the state decided to implement scientific speed limits, taking into account what I called road engineering, traffic environment, and also the human injury tolerance. Right? So the speeds were decided scientifically. They only, did not accept it only as the policy. They not only accepted it as a policy, but they notified it to give the required legal support that it has to be implemented throughout the state. So the notification was done. Notifying I think that's very crucial. Limit, right? For various scenarios, both in urban and rural areas. And with this, remarkably, West Bengal became the first state in India to adopt a scientific approach to speed management. And incidentally with that, Kolkata became the first city to notify differentiated speed limits under various conditions, but most importantly, with a maximum cap of 50 km per hour. The state did not stop there. 
they are also prioritizing the speed enforcement as a part of their commitment to effective implementation. And finally, coming to Priyanshi to your other part, this model, what we did or what we worked with in West Bengal, it is rooted in science and evidence. So it is also both practical and replicable. So therefore, we strongly believe and we are confident that every state in India can adapt a similar approach because it is scientific. Of course, they need to tailor it to the local risk and the local context while keeping the data-driven decision-making at the core. Professor Bhargav, so thank you for uh, responding to that. During our conversations, brought up human injury tolerance and that and that takes us to one of the most affected groups, vulnerable road users. For example, two-wheelers account for around 44% of road crash fatalities and they're especially at risk when it comes to unchecked speed. What are your thoughts on that? I must thank you, Priyanshi, because you, uh, you raised and you highlighted this aspect Although I mentioned about vulnerable road users, I did not mention specifically so far anything about two-wheelers <laughs> or at great risk. Yes, when we look at closely, we find that some vehicle categories like two-wheelers and in on many occasions even the three-wheelers, they are not always fully addressed in existing speed enforcement framework. Also, speed penalties in India are not graded by how much someone exceeds the speed or exceeds the limit. Now, obviously, we require a system where there is zero tolerance to speeding. But at the same time, let us also understand if you deviate the speed by 10 kilometer and if you overspeed by 30, 40 kilometer, the death risks are very different in case of a crash. So therefore, there is a need to introduce a system where the higher the speed over the limit, prescribed limit, the greater should be the penalty. And this is not something new, maybe new in our country, but such kind of things already do exist in other countries with very strong enforcement record. And obviously, their safety performance are, is also better. It's crucial that we prioritize safety over convenience because it's a question of life and death. And I believe that we can do it very effectively. We can fulfill the target given by the government by using speed management as a key instrument. Irrational, national and state-level speed policy supported by appropriate legislation because that legislation is again very important. This is essential to institutionalize the shift. When we talk about turning these ideas into real-world change, what kind of systemic shifts in policy, capacity, or say collaboration do, do you think we most urgently need to address? I would say Scientific and evidence-based speed management, that's a necessity. Along with supporting policy and legal support, without legal support and policy, nothing can work. We also give due priority to the enforcement, the capacity building needs, and last but most important probably, collective and coordinated efforts from all stakeholders and as I say, it means all the related government departments and even outside, everybody, you, I, to everyone. And then only, only through this collective and coordinated report, we can truly transform India to a safer India. Thank you, Professor Bhargav, for joining us and helping us understand how India can approach speed management with science sensitivity and systemic strength and to our listeners thank you for tuning in don't forget to like share and subscribe 
to the Road Sense podcast by Road Safety Network. Let's continue this conversation and together let's work towards safer roads for all. Thank you so much. And soon as policy makers come together in the parliament's upcoming session, we do hope road safety is among the pressing issues being taken up, right? Expect the uh, the parliamentary session to give prominent space to road safety in the upcoming sessions and I think this should hap- happen because we are talking about saving lives. That is something which is everybody's responsibility. India is committed to uh, having road uh, accidents or rather road casualties to 50% by 2030, something which is achievable when we have policies and laws together, in fact. And there are lots of policy changes that can be envisaged and lots of uh, laws that can be amended to ensure that by the time we reach 2030, we have had a decline in the fatalities 